Okay, for this next one, we don't have it in the proper form because you have to have a one after the equal sign. So the first thing you should do is put it into the proper form. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this here and I'm gonna re, uh, divide everything by 64. Again, you wanna get a one after the equal sign. Then we can go ahead and answer the rest of the questions. So we get y squared over 16 minus x squared over four and that's gonna equal one. So this here uh, would be our, the one that we're gonna be working with. Now, as I mentioned before, the A value is always just physically what comes underneath the first fraction. It doesn't matter if it's an X or a Y that comes first. Whatever number is, uh, that comes first. So A is going to be the square root of 16, which is 4, and your B is square root of 4, which is going to be 2. So that comes directly from your formula there. Now, the fact that the Y squared comes first, uh, when we're talking about the models we had in the beginning of this section, this tells us it's going to be opening up and down. So hyperbola opens up and down because we have a y squared here that comes first. So here's our a and b values. We want to find our c value. As I mentioned before in the previous video, the formula for c always has a squared and b squared, but the, the sign inside is always opposite the one in the formula. So we have a minus sign there, so it means we're going to have a plus inside the formula for c. So we have 4 squared plus 2 squared have inside there and then you get 16 plus 4 is the square root of 20 and square root of 20 we can break that up into 2 square root of 5 okay so that's going to be our c value this time okay so now that we have that okay we're ready to answer uh, some of these questions here the first one the center once again is going to be 0 0 because we don't have any parentheses around there asymptotes okay if you have a hyperbola that's opening up and down, the formula in the book says that your asymptotes, this is what we're following, we're just going to follow the formula, it's plus or minus a over b. Okay, so a over b means that we're going to do plus or minus 4 over 2 uh, times x, or you can simplify that down, 4 over 2 is the same thing as I'm just going to go ahead and write it this way as 2x. So again, that's uh, plus or minus a over b, 4 over 2. That's where I got the 2 from here. And that's going to be your uh, final answer for asymptotes. Eccentricity is c over a. That's 2 square root of 5 over 4 or root 5 over 2. If you want to do a decimal comparison uh, to look at that, then it's going to be 1.12 we have uh, for that one. Okay, it's so 1.12. Still going to be a little bit narrow one. And we also have that this is 4.47 uh, for 2 square root of 5. So we'll use that later when we, uh, we draw it to get our foci. Transverse axis is always going to be 2 times a. Now the reason why I didn't mention this in the last video, but I should make a point on that, transverse and conjugate. Now that's the same thing as like a major and a minor when you're talking about ellipses, but the reason why we don't call them major and minor is because we'll look at in a couple of examples later, there's some times where the a value may not always be the larger number. So if a is not always a larger number, we can't say that that's always going to be the, the major axis. So that's why we actually have different names for them in this section here, transverse and conjugate. So transverse, the formula is the same though. It's always 2 times a, so 2 times 4, that's going to be 8. Conjugate's always 2 times b, in this case it's 2 times 2, which is going to be 4. So we have those, so we have all this information here. Next we want to look at the um, vertices and the foci. Alright, so here, go ahead and rewrite this up here. This is y squared over 16 minus x squared over 4 equals 1. That's the one that we did when we divide everything through by 64, we got that one. Okay, so center is going to be at 0, 0 right here. The A and the B that you have that we talked about before are always what you're going to be using to create the box. So we already said that A was 4 and B was 2, so we're going to use that. Now I also determined that because the Y squared comes first, that's the direction you have to go with the A value. It opens up and down. So from the center, I need to create the box by using A and B. The box is created so that way I can connect the corners with my asymptotes and that way it will give me a guide for drawing the actual uh, hyperbola. Okay, so A goes up, we go up 4, we make a dot. Going to do a down 4, make a dot. So these right here 
those are your vertices. Whenever you go up and down with A, automatically those are your vertices that you can put down. So I have zero plus or minus four. That's the coordinates for my vertices right there. I need to go left and right with B. Okay, now all that's gonna do is gonna give me the left and right sides of the box. So I'm gonna draw a box in. So here's the left and right sides of the box are determined by the B. Up and down part of the box, that's the top and bottom of the box, that's determined by the A value. So now we have our box that's drawn there. A is going up and B is gonna go that way. Once the box is drawn, now we're gonna go ahead and draw in the dotted lines, the diagonals, connecting the box. And that's gonna create the, uh, the, the slant asymptotes or oblique asymptotes that go along with this formula right here, plus or minus two X. All right, so I have this hyperbola is gonna go open up like this. It's gonna go through that point right there because that's a vertice, an actual point on there. And then down here, it does the same thing. It also will hit that point zero, negative four. So that's the graph is complete. The last thing we have to do now is worry about the C value because that's our um, to how we get our foci. Now we said that C was equal to about, we'll say about 4.5 approximately is what that was equal to. So we're gonna go 4.5, make a dot right here. 4.5 down there, we're gonna make a dot. So now we have our foci. So in actuality what I did was, from the center right here, I have the x value of zero. So I know the foci has an x value of zero because it, it always will have the same x value as the vertices. And then from the y value, I added and subtracted the c value, which we got the c value was that two square root of five we had before. So c was also two root five. We did that previously. So what this looks like is plus or minus two square root of five. That would be your uh, foci. And that's actually what I added going up this way and going down that way. We just use a decimal equivalent of about uh, 4.5, but that would be uh, your final graph. So we have Foci are labeled on the graph, we have vertices on there, we have our asymptotes, everything is complete.